Hi, um, my name is Garth. Welcome to my channel, Tiny House South Africa, all under my name, Garth Hensley. Um, this is my homestead. Uh, it is a tiny house on wheels and uh, it is completely off grid and we are striving towards being what's called, I just got a new term from a friend called energy independent. We've been here for five years, uh, learning about homesteading and I've been making content a little bit about this process, especially localized for South Africa. And uh, yeah, I've got this really great project that I'm kind of working on a little bit. It's uh, going to be about homesteading. And today I've got a friend I'm going to visit and help him make a little video. And he's doing exactly the same thing in a different way. Today is going to be the beginning of a process. I've got quite a few friends that live a similar life. And I'd love to be making content to educate people about that are interested in doing this. Daryl, my friend, my first homesteading film that I want to make. So Daryl has been homesteading as far as I know about five years, but we'll con confirm that. He's got some amazing systems, solar, um, backup systems for the solar. He's got a biodigester. He's got uh, flower gardens. He's got some really, really amazing ideas. And I'd like to be able to share those and try and get some information out of him out of him with regards to like where did he go wrong how what was right Daryl mm, cool. take two okay. Take two. Okay. Um, back, I mean, obviously, I'm really. I wanted to do this properly. Mm. That was my whole idea. It was I'm, um, mm. I'm feeling like this is definitely like a genre that I would not only mm. benefit from learning, but yeah. I could also benefit and offer value to people. So oh, I thought yeah. then, like after reviewing our last time we shot this, I thought, well, it was great, but it was it, mm. it lacked what was like the juice. There were so the many next. things we didn't <laughs> we didn't cover, you know. Yeah. So. Um, maybe just a little introduction first, just like who, okay. the where, the how long, mm. uh, just of your homestead. Cool. And yeah. then I'll ask a few more questions and we'll go from there. Okay. Cool. So, <clears throat> I'm Daryl Hunt. Okay. Of uh, a company called Eco Sunergy, which I started up a couple of years ago. Um, and we are in the crags near Plettenberg Bay. Okay. Which is on the southern coast of South Africa, <laughs> just in case it's South Africans nowhere. don't know where it is. Um, myself and my family moved from Cape Town about five years ago with um, the dream of being self-sufficient and living off the fat of the land and it was all very um, stars in the eyes kind of stuff. Um, an opportunity opened up where I could um, still be a vet here in the area um, and um, we could start the ball rolling, so we, we, we bought this little property in um, a, a group of four people, uh, started a company for that and, and then managed to then buy the, buy the property. And we've basically been working on that uh, in a way to, to then aiming for that to earn us our livings. Um, and um, yeah, having a... Um, fantastic experience along the way um, it fitted in with my I, I have a have always had a huge passion for renewable energy um, and dogs hey Dave um, <clears throat> but uh, that's been opened up the door for for us to for me to get involved um, in fact to change direction uh, of, of my job to, to now go full-time into solar energy and solar installations um, but also to explore sustainability um, on a greater level and in a practical way um, because after <clears throat> spending a year at the Sustainability Institute in Stellenbosch in 2012 I very quickly realized that um, sustainability as a concept is still quite academic 
uh, a lot of homesteaders, uh, there's a lot of homesteading going on um, and a lot of um, experience being gained, but there's very little avenues for that to be shared. I think YouTube is one that's coming on online, which is fantastic because people can, can, can learn a lot and take a lot of shortcuts. Um, where something might have um, possibly gotten the better <laughs> of us. Um, I think having a few shortcuts and, and, and ways, ways around that um, you know, is, is, is always going to be um, good to have a helping hand and, and a bit of guidance. Um, so, so, I mean, okay, so you've been here now five years, yeah? Yeah. Five years. Yeah. So and we've been here five years, um, been building up various things, and it's probably only about now that we're starting to feel a little more comfortable in the whole environment and, and starting to see some returns from the property. Um, and but yeah, it's, oh, that's it's a long, a, it's a long ROI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, but I mean, I guess with any mm. business, even if you approach it as a business, businesses mm. take a few years until people Absolutely. see. So, if anything, the a good takeaway just from that little thing is mm. that this is not a quick fix. This is definitely if not you, a quick fix. If you're into a quick fix. If your idea of homesteading or being sustainable or living more of a sustainable life, mm. it is a process Absolutely. and not just like a flip the switch kind of thing. Absolutely. I think, and maybe something I would, I would take <clears throat> my previous um, job, um, being a vet, is also one of those things very much a calling, um, which uh, can be very frustrating if, you, <laughs> if you're fighting the, fighting the flow. Um, but homesteading in this in this regard, I think, is is um, is definitely a, a calling in a way because uh, it, it has to. Um, you, you need to to grow organically with the process, um, or you may uh, not enjoy it at all. <laughs> and it might break you. Um, so you know, I think. Um, I think it's it, but 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 uh, but but in my opinion, and 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 obviously that's my humble opinion. Um, I think that's where we are at. You know, it certainly suits me as a person to 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 be growing organically in in a way with um, the property. Um, I think I'm we're lucky in a way because the property lends itself to that. So that's also important. I think to to see um, whether your dreams. Are in alignment with where you want to be and where you want to do it um, don't uh, necessarily try and um, uh, what's the, the, the saying um, don't send a duck to eagle school or don't try and produce ice in the desert or you know what that might not be a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, okay so I, I think that's awesome in the sense of I mean I personally have come here now two or three times and I've had a good look around. Um, some of the, f I mean, by far, I think, um, I mean, I know that you work with solar and that you've got a, a, a viable solar system for your homestead, so I'd love you to chat a little bit about that, as well as a few other things that really stand out for me, the biodigester is something that I think is an amazing thing, but I think uh, uh, people need to know the the truth about that mm. that information, especially mm. for here in South Africa, and what mm. requires what might be required to have a biodigester. Um, simple things that I really love are the because I live on rainwater and I've got no filtration system, and mm. you showed me yours, and I'd love to look at it again. But that was such a simple hack, mm. and I think it was great. So I'd love to talk about that a little bit. And then, yeah, I think, uh, so if there's anything like that, I mean, you've got these, um, those are some of the, uh, I know you've got a compost loo as well. Um, I know you're harvesting your own wood on your land, uh, mm -hmm. taking out some pie, uh, some trees that needed to be taken mm -hmm. out, but you're sharing the resource with someone, they're applying the saw, lending you the saw, you're giving them part of the harvest, mm -hmm. but you're actually turning your harvest into furniture, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. I think those are kind of things that would be nice if you could talk just a little bit about them broadly. Um, yeah, and let's maybe start off with the solar because that's your that's your niche really. That's where yeah. you're working as well. Yeah, cool, great. Okay, so 
solar energy is is really um, I think in this country an absolute no-brainer we've got beautiful resource here um, <clears throat> so to not use it is is almost sinful considering the fact that um, our generally our, our other source of, of electricity is ESCOM which has put us in the highest polluters in the world per capita okay so that's something that as South Africans we shouldn't be proud of and something that not a lot of us even realize that our coal-fired um, power stations uh, make us incredibly um, energy dirty compared to the rest of the world because they have a, a lot of renewable energies in the mix uh, whereas we're actually quite far behind as far as renewable energy so solar <clears throat> there's a huge reason to do solar in the first there should be a lot more impetus for people to to actually want to be on solar the great thing about solar um, power is that generally speaking certainly the ones that I deal with the systems are quite modular so you don't have to start um, with a quarter of a million system you can start with what you can afford okay it doesn't always it's not always practical but it certainly is possible to start with something to offset your your usage of ESCOM okay so you don't need to provide your you don't have to go off grid immediately but you can you can do what you can and in another year or two's time you can add some modules to that to bring you closer to your um, being a little bit less dependent on ESCOM so, so I think that's what I would also try and point out to to people is that solar is modular it can grow and it can scale up quite easily um, for an average household like ours um, we started off I mean we are completely off-grid so we never had ESCOM in the first place and, and 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 that's possibly another point to bring up at this point is that if you if you are going solar you need some form of other power because the sun doesn't always shine that's the reality um, so whether that is is the grid or a generator you need to have some other form of, of electrical power so so I think that's one thing I would always want to to make sure people understand is that they don't have to start off with with um, you know being off-grid yeah. they, they can start small and add to that so that they can work their way towards off-grid and always remember having a backup system exactly. so it's not an independent having, system you need multiple that's systems. right you know uh, uh, that's it so um, you have a multiple system yeah you have so we we have a generator um, which we would use if necessary um, fortunately recently upgraded my, my um, lead acid batteries to a lithium ion battery okay which is just a phenomenal jump in, in technology and I haven't needed to start my journey since then how big so, is your lithium ion battery so the lithium ion has 20 kilowatt hours in storage um, what does that mean really like okay so if we bear in mind that uh, let's use a um, an electric kettle okay, okay. Uh, which I'm pointing over there but we don't have one <laughs> we, we've got a gas stove top kettle um, because generally speaking any heating with electricity on solar is just a bad idea um, with an element Sorry, so any little. heating element with the solar is not a viable thing. so using using heating elements um, with with solar is not a great idea but it's a, it's an example to use so, so your average kettle, um, plug-in kettle, electric kettle, is about 2,000 watts, okay, or 2 kilowatts. Now, if you were to then use that kettle permanently, or like an electric geyser, which are then more like 3 kilowatts, um, okay. let's say a geyser comes on for 4 hours, using 3 kilowatts for 4 hours, that's literally 12 kilowatt hours that it has used. Okay. In, in terms of, of, of ESCOM, that's usually referred to as a unit. Okay. A kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. Okay. So that is quite important to, to, to bear in mind. If you do know how many kilowatt hours you use in a day or a month, um, okay. that becomes useful information because that, that allows you to then say, okay, well, my solar system needs to provide me with between 20 and 25 kilowatt hours during the, the summer months. Okay. Often in winter, because of heating, if you heat with elect electricity, which is once again a bad thing, rather use fire or gas. So basically, the best thing to do is to make sure that you streamline your systems, you use gas where yeah. to heat anything for your water or for your kettles. Ideally. And uh, that's going to 
allow you to get more, maximize your solar usage? Or? So wh what, what it does is it, is it then removes a huge component of, of electrical work that, that your solar system would have to do. Because heating is, is up to 40% of what we need to do with our power. Okay. okay. Sometimes more, probably up to 60, can be up to 60% of what we need to do is heat stuff up. Okay. And if you have to do that with an electrical element, it's just going to use way too much electricity. can be done, but then you're going to need to spec your solar system so big that it's going to be beyond uh, affordability. Okay. So, 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 so switching to, to gas for, for those options, and you can obviously get gas stoves, you can get gas geysers, you can get all sorts of things on LPG, um, <clears throat> and then the balance you let your solar system do with electricity. Okay, and LPG is liquid petroleum gas and that's our universal gas here in South Africa at any petrol station or hardware That's our shop. standard, that's our standard gas. Yeah. Like we're covering awesome stuff. We mm. basically have spoken a little about the, the introduction to your homestead. Mm. We've spoken about solar, mm. some beneficial stuff about solar, understanding it's a multi-layered system. Mm. And now we're speaking about the biodigester. I just thought I want to ask you one or two things about the biodigester. It's like the romantic idea that like yeah. you actually are going to have to learn to deal with your yes. shit, yeah. number one. So mm. it's not, the, it's not mm. a pretty thing. Mm. Yes, it's a mm. wasted resource, but it's mm. really mm. something that's going to be hands-on and mm. not pretty. Mm. And the one thing that I'm not quite sure, you said 90%. Like, mm. Is your problem that you actually don't have enough waste? to create the amount of gas that you require yeah because i know that you said mm. something about you have to get cow poo from the neighbor's mm. farm the, mm. the dairy farmer mm. to actually prime it to, to get feed it, it, it yeah. to feed it to so feed you it, have yeah. to feed it so mm. you're not actually mm. creating enough waste for the size no, of exactly. the one that you've created for the amount of energy that you're trying to take out okay so, so that's also just the basic science thing okay? okay and the other big factor that plays into this picture is um is temperature okay environmental are temperature. we too like it needs obviously hot slightly too cold yeah exactly so okay. in winter it slows down a lot um and we can we can look at the gauge it's like on about three um kpa okay uh in summer it'll go up to 10 11 you oh, know wow. so it starts okay. to really pump out the gas but but at this temperature and at this feeding level um it gives us just enough to sort of tick by Okay. Um, but I do have it piped for, you know, for, for the staff uh, house and another cottage down there, which unfortunately in winter we just shut down. Okay. They just have to switch to LPG. Um, cool. So. And so, just some other stuff then. So basically that's power. Yeah. Now water. Do you catch all your own water? Do you have yep. any dams? Okay, so we are quite fortunate in that we have a river um, water supply that comes in at about a hose pipe sort of pressure. Okay. Um, so that's for basic um, uh, baths and taps. And that's and down in the valley. Can it's actually it comes in just here. Oh, okay. Yeah, it comes in just here. It's the Laredo um, oh, okay. water scheme. Okay. Uh, but generally speaking, we catch all our own rainwater um, and store as much as we can in the tanks and use that. Uh, How much rainwater do you keep? We actually only have about 5,000 liters of, of, of rainwater available because the balance is from the, the river water. Okay. But I think if we were to, to go without the river water, we would probably need at least 30, 30 to 40,000 liters. Okay. Yeah. And so, and then what's quite nice, what I really like, is your very simple way of filtering your uh, rainwater harvesting. Yeah, you know, it, it, <clears throat> when, when we first arrived here, um, there was just a, a gutter and a pipe going into the tank and that was that. And, and, and after about a year, um, I realized there was a bit of a weird taste <clears throat> to the drinking water and, and went in and checked and there was probably a layer about that thick of um, organic matter at the bottom of the tank. And I realized, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> Out in these parts, we are quite uh, dependent on rainwater, and one needs to figure out ways to to make that, keep that nice and clean. And the first way is obviously to exclude any organic matter from getting in, into the tank in the first place. So, so there's a nice little, um, and these are all available over the the counter in most hardwares. You might have to ask someone to order something for you, but um, Jojo is pretty pretty sharp on on quite a lot of things um, as far as a company goes that makes tanks. Uh, you can get a lot of accessories, 
and you just got to put them in the right place. So the first one would be to put something on, on the gutter that catches the leaves and excludes that from going down the, the, the pipe. Uh, and, uh, and the next thing would then be um, a first flush system. Um, and we can show you that later. Um, but that essentially is just something that takes the initial wash that comes off the roof. You want to basically dump that because that's all your dusty water, maybe a little bit of bird crap that's uh, dissolved in that first uh, flush of rain. And you don't want that in your drinking water. So you just dump that off and then you make sure that the rest of that goes into your, your tank. Awesome. And uh, really nice, simple system, basic plumbing stuff that is all freely available. And as I say, you just got to put it in the oh, I'm, place. I'm super inspired. Like that's my next little DIY project at home is to make sure that I kind of get that system put in because I've now got my three rainwater tanks and they all feed into each other. So I could do that. Fantastic. And, uh, and then, like I told you, I, I have this vision of somehow turning into like a little water feature which would also be in a water, like, I don't know, a water activator or just to, to, to give the water some form of its own natural vibration. But I don't want to get too esoteric because there's no actual science to it, but it's just something personally I, from being out in the mountains and drinking pure water mm. and being in a city and drinking like stagnant water, mm. I just know that difference. No, um, other things I wanted to talk about is so I've seen that you've got your garden and it's like Fort Knox. <laughs> so, so you know, people come and they, they want to grow food, you know, mm. and they also think that they're going to come grow enough food for their families mm. or communities. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard on the size of a, a door, you can grow enough food to feed a family. I'm not sure. Yeah, they... I don't know how they do that exactly yeah. and in what, and, and I know that one can, I personally feel it's great to grow any form of food, yeah. to learn about that, mm. but not unless like you're going all in, mm. all of uh, energy in to mm. try and produce mm. and I'm not particularly that kind of person mm. I'm more passionate about technology yeah. and about systems yeah. so and I feel like you're a similar kind of person but I mean I, I see that you've got electric fence around your garden mm. and you've got netting around your yeah. actual gardening so is that yeah, to yeah. protect from animals yeah, that's the thing, you know, it's all very well to be out in the, in the sticks, which is beautiful to see the sunsets, but uh, you also are then up against nature. And there's a lot of guys out there that would like to have uh, eat your veggies as much as you would. Um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of predators that live in the forest that also eat the chickens before you get them. So, you know, you do have to realize you, you have to create infrastructure to look after your, what you are growing. Um, whether that's food, uh, uh, vegetables or, or, or food animals, um, you know, they all need looking after. And uh, sometimes that can surprise us how much looking after they need. You know? okay. yeah. um, and do you have like a, a, any form of a viable crop or anything that you sell? Because people think they're going to grow produce or I'm going to be a macadamia nut farmer or an almond farmer. Mm -hmm. Have you found any way to actually produce something that could bring some economics mm. and come back into the farm. Mm. So I have to say, uh, five years down the line, I still have to keep my day job. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's incredibly hard to make, to make land pay. Um, as any farmer will, will, will attest, uh, it's hard work. It's, it's not an easy job. Um, and essentially that's what you're doing when, you, when you're homesteading. Uh, it's just that it's a, it's more of a variety of things that you end up doing. Um, it does require um, a lot of lateral thinking along the way. We started out growing um, a lot of veggies. We're now ending up growing lots of flowers because there's more of a, a, a economical model and, and more financially viable to, to do it that way. So I think from that point of view, we've, we've definitely learned to, to listen to the farm a little bit. You know, you, you can't come along with your own uh, blueprint of what you want to do and force it onto um, a property. Uh, sometimes that property isn't going to be able to do it or, or just doesn't want to for whatever reason. Okay. So I think that's important is to just listen to, to, to what's going on and maybe that's... And so that ties back into this isn't a quick fix. No. This is like a watch no. and learn kind of process and where it's, you... It's, it's a way of life, exactly. It's a... It's a uh, you know, whether 
call it a calling or, a, or, or something, but it, it, it requires a mindset that is, 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 that wants to be there and that wants to um, play on that field because uh, it, it's not always easy, um, but it's incredibly enriching uh, and one is learning all the time. You have to be open to learning all the time. Um, so some other things I, I want to put this into the podcast it's like if you could go back you've been there five years now mm. if you could go back to the Daryl that just bought this land that was about to come in gung ho ready mm. to get started mm. but you could spend five minutes with yourself mm. and just give yourself some pointers about mm. parts that you may travel that would lead to no fruit or would just mm. be frustration. Yeah. If you could give yourself any advice, mm. um, what, what, would, uh, what would you tell yourself? Mm. I suppose it would have to be um, to, to, to not be down, downhearted or downtrodden when things don't work because, because a lot of the time you know, they, they just aren't going to work uh, until you find that secret little recipe. Um, in some instances, it just requires perseverance. Um, but I think if I was to sit down with myself, um, I would I would have to say, um, take some shortcuts, <laughs> get some help. Um, you don't have to figure everything out for yourself. You know, I think I think maybe that's also a masculine thing that we we tend to to never ask for directions. You know. Um, we know we're looking for something. We're looking and we know where we're going, but, but we don't always want to ask, even though that guy next door might, might have the answer. You know, we end up banging our head against brick walls quite a lot of the time. So I think be, be open to, 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 to other people's experiences is, is essential. Get some help from, from people who have been there. Um, I think that's, that's a surefire way in any uh, realm uh, to to you know to avoid pitfalls and and dead ends um, because it's subtle but unfortunately there are in retrospect ways to do it wrong and ways to do it a whole lot better uh, and that just comes down to experience so I think uh, a marriage of the two is important because I think you know we can't just keep doing things the way we've done them so learning from the past and learning from previous uh, in this case generations is not always that useful when it comes to technology technology has also outstripped so many things in so many ways you know and that's where solar power is 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 now capable of doing stuff that we would never have thought um, and 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 so obviously that marriage of using experience with uh, new technology that's for me is where we where we can make some exciting changes and, and, and break some ground you know because technology is changing all the time and and I think it takes people out on, on, on the edge in a way on, on homesteads to sometimes put some of that stuff into practice to 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 see how it works and provide an example that, that a lot of things can work. Sure. Um, yeah. I found um, what's quite interesting and I, I see like a completely different mindset like I came with very limited resources mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like I had about 200,000 Rand that I had to make work yeah. turn into something that worked yeah. but I did and now I've you know now I have way more money mm. than I've mm. ever had before mm. and I had this mm. resource it's just like I had to start off very simple mm. I had to consider what systems I could afford to put in yeah. and then how I could grow those systems yeah. better That's you it. seem to be able to or have the opportunity to um, like put in systems that have better long-term mm. thinking mm. like you showed me your mm. gas and mm. solar so you've got a solar geyser on mm. your little rentable cottage Correct. and then you've got a backup uh, gas yes. geyser yep. and it's they're both very good quality mm. ones mm. so you know you can buy ones that are inexpensive but mm. instead of that thinking I see that you've thought I rather get the better quality mm. they you know what you're getting mm. and actually the re return of uh, on investment in the long is run better, exactly. is going to be not much better you know exactly. but not everyone has the capacity mm. to have that uh, sure. ability to buy mm. they have to use what mm. they can but mm. 
But I think like the idea of this is to show people that some people get hot water from mm. a black pipe on their roof. Exactly. And exactly. and that can work and that in can the meantime. Work. Exactly, yeah. You know, and and um, so it's 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 there's a million different ways to do this. Mm. And part of the idea of opening these kind of conversations is mm. to let people know that there is a wealth of information out there. Yeah, exactly. But you have to be able to ask people mm. and now with the internet, yeah. if you just have the right question, mm. you can actually go and Find it exactly, and, and 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 I think one of my favourites is 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 that the universe rewards action. You know, it's, it, yes, of course, do the research, do the reading, find out, but then you have to just act. You know, and at some point, you have to just take a leap, and 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 maybe that's what I would also I'd go back <laughs> <laughs> and tell myself to leap higher. You know, you have to. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, I personally, from what I see with what you're doing, I know you do the solar and uh, we can plug the uh, Eco Synergy, which is your business here mm. in the Garden Route, mm. which basically does, what's the slogan for your business? Practical Solutions to Sustainable Living. And oh. uh, which I think is amazing because you're living it. Mm. You're not just talking about it, you're mm. living it. You mm. are the, I know lots of wayward thinkers, I know mm. a lot of earthies, <laughs> I know beyond earthies, <laughs> but I know no one who built mm. a biodigester mm. and actually ma made it happen mm. and mm. then is learning about that. Mm. And I just mm. see that as an investment in mm. something great because mm. as this trend moves towards people wanting to be more energy independent and learn, mm. you are a pioneer. Mm in that field and mm. what you'll be able to do is eventually turn it into um, a greater aspects of your mm. business mm. which you'll either mm. be able to train or you'll yeah. be able to offer exactly. services yeah. or consultancies exactly. yeah and, and, and i think that's amazing that's it and even and, and you know one of the primary goals behind what i my dream of of of, of being here on this farm um which is a dream i had when i was in cape town too but it just on a place like this it's become for more feasible is is to put a lot of these what were previously academic concepts that i learned about into practice so that other people could see whether they were working or not you know and and, and unfortunately that was the question working or not you know i didn't know when i started luckily they're all working you know um, and other people can now see that you know so it's not such a big leap of faith you can come and visit and see that it works. The responsibility of, you know, for our own lives and for our, all our processes, for all our needs, you know, be that water or food or, for instance, dealing with your own sewage. You know, that's something that I hadn't contemplated before I was here, you know. Most people in cities don't think about what happens after it goes away from your property. Why should it be your problem? Um, but that's part of responsibility. That's part of our lives, you know, and our needs and our effects on the earth, you know. And, 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 and so I think the more one can take responsibility for one's own life and one's own uh, impact on the earth, uh, the more you can close those loops of um, needs and, you know, um, and, and, and so... For me, anyway, I think that's a huge part of, of, of what that, that feeling that you that you describe of like this is very satisfying, you know. Like uh, I think the first time I turned on my biogas, um, we happened to have some eggs from the chickens before they all got eaten by the <laughs> the forest predators, um, and I had two eggs that I was then uh, had harvested that morning from the chickens, and I was cooking them on our own biogas, and it was a very very uh, fantastic feeling to to know that that whole process of feeding myself was a little bit of a closed system and 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 that's that's incredibly fulfilling and and uh yeah that organic process is 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 palpable you know in those moments so it's uh, um, last thing i want to really catch on and then i want to close this up i'm going to turn it into podcast and video and everything <laughs> but um, I think a lot of people just come in with a sense of naivety, um, a bit of an Instagram idea of this community and living close to the earth. And, yeah. and I'm very much a realist in trying to give people actual data because yeah. I, I would hate people to waste resource. You know, some yeah. people might be might thriving, mm. 
thriving might be you might be able to live in a flat in an urban environment do as little work and surf as much as you like and have a little garden balcony mm. and that can be a model of thriving and mm. success yeah and and so, but some people they see this life and they don't realize what it is mm. and and I personally um, am happy because I'm a micro homesteader. Mm. It means I only have to work like a day or two mm. in the week mm. and the other five days I play mm. because it only takes that much to manage mm. those systems. That's it. Yeah. And I don't want to go bigger than that. Mm. I actually want to streamline yeah. that so I can maximize more yield and Absolutely. do even less yeah. and so I can live more. Mm. And, there's, and that's my portrayal yeah. on it. That's it. And I think people are just a little bit like, they want to go live with others mm. or they want to go live away from cities mm. or resources mm. but they don't actually come with the how am i going to live there mm. exactly. what what am i going to do there yeah. um yeah. how much energy is it going to take you know and then yeah. Yeah. They, they don't think about that have you had any like uh, realizations of coming here where you didn't see that and mm. now all of a sudden it was like okay the kids are going to have mm. to go to school where's mm. school Huge. you know it's like massive 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 you know, the implications um, can sometimes hit you long afterwards, um, you know, because you, in one situation in Cape Town, urban living, you'll have certain costs. Um, and when you suddenly are living 30 k's from the nearest town, those costs will be very different. Some of them will be less, but some of them will be much more. Uh, you know, I've never, before we moved out here, I never spent more than 500 Rand on electricity a month suddenly your electricity bill might be three or four thousand rand you know uh, with the same usage just for different political reasons uh, another thing will be then uh, how much you spend on petrol or diesel every month because 30 k is backwards and forwards to town is suddenly going to use up a lot of fuel so so things change you know and and um and then kids come along and school you never thought would cost that much <laughs> so, so yeah absolutely and i, I think but maybe more to the point of what you're saying, or if I understand, is, you know, I've, I've for a long time also thought that most people, including myself, um, want more than we need. Um, and I think that's quite a difficult concept to, 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 to actually get very clear in one's head. Um, because you can usually have what you want, but you need to be able to do what is required to get it. Um, that's maybe where some some people go wrong, but um, I think we we need to realise that we actually don't need a hell of a lot, you know. Um, and maybe wanting all those other things can can just be a huge distraction. So that's the one part of the the equation I think that you're talking about. Yeah. Um, and that a, a you know a life that is 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 more uh, rooted in in reality and and and. Carrying water and chopping wood, <laughs> to, to quote Van Morrison, um, is 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 just part of the real, you know, nit nitty gritty of, of being alive, um, and and uh, but yeah, I think I think possibly from from the homesteading point of view, you know, to you know, one one often then gets to a point where um, you know you you perhaps think you should be living off the land, kind of thing. Um, that's a very difficult place to get to, you know, I, I, I don't know a lot of people, there are a few, um, but we certainly aren't there yet, uh, who, who can say that, you know. Um, to live off the land is, is not an easy thing, um, because it requires an interaction with the real world, you know, which, which uh, if we're lucky and we can do a bit of trading here and there, that's great, but generally speaking you need to earn some money to pay the bills. And that's just about figuring out uh, you know, what your farm can do and, and wants to do and, and whether that um, makes financial sense. You know? um, Living with other people, buying farms with other people, any quick thoughts on that? Can you absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We, we had a similar, a similar issue. Um, fortunately, it didn't um, become anything and, and, and we, we bought out a partner, but we started off with four people in a company. Um, and, and four people doesn't sound like a lot, but it means four independent egos and independent ideas that need to become one for you to make any decisions and move forward. So I know when I was younger, we used to dream a lot about having this big 
farm with lots of stuff being done, but it doesn't happen unless we have a common goal. Um, and, and I think the more people involved, the more difficult it becomes to make any decisions that carry impetus and make things happen. Um, so I would definitely advise people to just minimize the number of people involved in these kind of decisions. It becomes complex, okay? Just human, human, humans are co complex people. <laughs> and we, we have our own ideas. So, so if we can minimize the human, the human influence, uh, two people struggle, any partnership, any marriage will, will know uh, that even two people can be an issue. But, uh, so keep it to a minimum as far as people who need to make decisions and, and work. And obviously even there, there you need to be pretty similarly minded, you know, otherwise um, things can get stuck. Yeah. Um, you know, and, 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 and having a, 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 a homestead like this, there's always decisions that need to be made and things that need to happen. Otherwise it's going to sit. And, and, and be overtaken by a wattle. <laughs> so, sure, sure, sure. so so it does need it is a big part of, you part are, of the process. You are basically keeping the nature at bay. <laughs> That's all you're doing. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think this has been amazing. I, I definitely think we'll do this kind of thing again. I know that you do the solo work. People can you have a website? Yep, ecosanergy.com. Okay, I'll put a plug, a plug it at the end. I'll put the details there for it. Uh, thanks for the time, Daryl. This has been thanks, a really Bob. nice interface. Yeah. Um, I would love to do a bit more stuff one day. We will do more intrinsic, like diving into some of the systems. Definitely. But uh, I think a lot of people will get a lot of good value from this. And uh, yeah, it's going to be fun to grow. Cool. Good okay. one. <laughs> Sweet. Action. Take. Done. It was a really fun little day. Um, having a look at uh, Daryl's beautiful homestead and like we said, it's really going to be something that we will make a series of. He has so many awesome projects, an amazing flower garden, so many different things that would just take, it would take ages. So we'd rather just turn it into short little clips. Um, the solar aspect is really something that could we could dive we could do a little bit of a deep dive but for now it's just to show what we have and yeah it's just to keep a continuity keep the information flowing create a database uh, we're happy to kind of uh, if you would like to reach out you have any questions and if we can answer or perhaps even point you in the right direction uh, then we gladly do so and yeah, just thanks for your time, your energy, and uh, please let us know what you'd like to know about. If there's anything here that you are interested in and we could perhaps uh, elaborate on, let us know. And until our next video, uh, thanks and uh, see you soon. Cheers.